who says they know your story. Like, you're still finding out who Ricky Williams is, right? Aren't yeah. we all? Well, that, well, that's the beauty of it is my, my story didn't stop with football, and, and it keeps going. And, and I tell people, you know, when – when I'm when I'm dead and gone, and they read my obituary, the fact that I played football would be one line at the at the very bottom. You know, Larry Sanders walked away from basketball here in our city, and you were one of the first people I thought of because my thought was he'd make a great thirty for thirty. Yeah. Because everyone wants to label him as a guy who doesn't love basketball, and he just took the money and ran. And Drew and I have been saying for weeks, like, there's a story there. Like, there there's more to it. I mean, he's he was hospitalized for mental health issues, and. He wants to be known as more than a basketball player, and you know I think people were hard on him for that. Now I've been there. Yeah. yeah. So so I wanted you know I wanted to get a little bit of your story too of of what the decision was like for you to walk away. Like when you're when you're making that decision to leave football the first time, not the second retirement, but to leave the Miami Dolphins. Like what are, what what did it take for you to arrive at that? It was an accident, and that, that's the strange thing. You know, um, I, had a, I had an assistant at the time, and she asked me to go up to New York and, and help her daughter drive, drive to Miami. So on our drive down, I'm hearing, listening to this lady talk, and she kept talking about she's an actress, she's an actress. And come to find out that she was in one play like eight years ago, but she kept describing herself as an actress. So I started to look at my life and, and start to wonder, like, am I really still just a football player? And so I started asking myself some questions, and one of the questions I asked was, is this really what I want to be doing right now? And the shocking answer that I got was no. And it freaked me out, and I started wondering, okay, well, what about the fame, and what about, you know, what, what are people going to say, and, and what about the money? And the answer I got was who cares? And I realized that I was ready, I was ready to be more than just a football player, and I didn't feel I could do it in, in the confines of the NFL football season and off season. so, so I decided to, to retire and do something different. I'm curious your thoughts on this. Drew and I grew up in an era where, you know, coaches would say, don't think, just play. You know, individualization was, no, don't. You know, it was a very Cro-Magnon attitude, and jocks were big, you know. Things have changed a little bit. Someone like yourself, I'm sure you were considered weird because you dared to think outside of the box. And with all of the the, the 180... 180 degree, a lot of people have gone on football because of head trauma and, and injuries and, and everything else. Do you think that attitude is starting to change a little bit? Is there, if, if a young guy, if, if you were 16 years old right now, do you think you would be treated differently um, and be allowed to think more individually as an athlete? Well, I, I think so now. And, you know, the thing about sports is I think it, to a certain extent it mirrors our society. Uh, I'm taking a sports history class, and it's amazing. If you look at the sports that were popular in the 1800s, I mean, they were barbaric. Mm -hmm. And, and as, as, as a society, as we've evolved, our sports have evolved too. And, and, and you know, being around a lot of college football players now, I, I see that, you know, the complexity of the offenses, and especially when you're in school, they're expected to be students too. I think we have to start to demand our athletes to be more intelligent. And, uh, and I think it'll help the game evolve to something that can actually survive. 